Hello everyone! Prepare for demonetization because today we're talking about penis bones. Let's jump right in. The baculum is a bone in the penis that is possibly used for sex by maintaining stiffness during copulation, prolonging the amount of time spent during sex. However, it could also be used to stimulate the female into ovulation, such as in mustelids, or even work to remove previous sperm in the female. Because the baculum has independently evolved in as many as nine different lineages of mammals, and with so many possible functions, the unfortunate fact is that it's difficult to determine its main function in a particular species. Perhaps the baculum is often multifunctional in all species that possess one. Regardless, the baculum has a wide variety of shapes and sizes. The shape of the baculum seems to be influenced by post-copulatory sexual selection, such as sperm competition, in populations where this is very important, as well as intromission duration, which is the length of time the penis is in the vagina. In general, longer intromission duration means a longer baculum, according to the 2004 paper, A Positive Relationship Between Baculum Length and Prolonged Intromission Patterns in Mammals. In rodents and carnivores, baculum length positively correlates with testis size, while baculum length does not correlate with testis size in bats or primates. There are, of course, numerous other variables involved in copulation that likely affect baculum length including ejaculation number, latency and deposition, polygamy versus monogamy, the extent of baculum expression on the surface of the penis, etc. So there is much we don't know about the baculum, but what do we know? Well, the baculum doesn't appear in the earliest mammals and isn't in monotremes or marsupials, even though they have some extremely bizarre sexual organs anyway. For instance, the monotreme's penis has four heads even though only two work at a time. In platypuses, only the left two work because only the female's left ovary functions. Meanwhile, in marsupials, females generally have two vaginas because the males have bifurcated penises. Female kangaroos, though, have three vaginas. Aren't we placentals boring? Among the eutherians, or placental mammals, the baculum exists in most groups but is absent in elephants, sirenians, hyenas, even though female hyenas of the species Crocuta crocuta develop a pseudopenis through which they give birth, ungulates, cetaceans, lagomorphs, humans, and a few others. In the mammals with bacula, as stated earlier, the bacula are highly varied. For example, the baculum of the fossa is rather long, while the panda's baculum is very short. Across caniforms generally, the baculum is allometrically constant, but that doesn't stop some members from developing weirdly shaped bacula. For example, the baculum of the yellow-throated marten has a hand-like tip, and the baculum of the steppe polecat looks like a spatula. But, the baculum is also represented by a few fossils in the record. From the Plasticine, bacula have been recovered from dire wolves and cave bears. Specimens of the Eocene primate from Germany, called Europolemur, have been found with bacula. Interestingly, among primates, humans, spider monkeys, and woolly monkeys don't have bacula, while the majority of primates do. In humans, it is unknown why we don't have a baculum, but a few hypotheses have been offered. One such was proposed by Richard Dawkins in his book The Selfish Gene. He hypothesized that perhaps females selected males with an honest indication of their health. In other words, males who could get it up without the use of a bone were seen as healthier, so the baculum was sexually selected out. Thus, the human male penis became totally hemodynamic or powered solely by blood. A second hypothesis proposed by Matilda Brindle says that humans have a different mating system compared to our closest relatives, with the humans having frequent copulations of short duration with one particular partner over a given period, which is monogamy. This is a simple way for the male to try to ensure paternity of any children his partner might have. But, bacula are more useful in very polygamous lifestyles with infrequent but long-lasting copulations as is indicated by primates with intromissions longer than three minutes, tend to have far longer bacula. And yes, it has been officially measured. 
the average duration of intromission in humans is below two minutes, which could give some consolation to some of you. All of this would suggest that the baculum became useless in humans, and useless traits are often lost over time. Another hypothesis put forward by Robert G. Bednarik explains the loss of the baculum as a side effect of human neoteny, which is the delay of development that causes the retention of juvenile traits, like how dogs look more like puppies than wolves do, or how the adult axolotl still has gills like tadpoles. And bacula aren't present in late fetal stages of chimpanzees, so the lack of a baculum could have been retained throughout human development. There is also a possibility that there is no particular reason or selective advantage for the absence of a baculum in humans. Even very useful traits can disappear from a population by means of genetic drift. One example is how one line of primates, called the haplorines, which includes us, lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C, which likely happened because a mutated form of one gene involved in that process was simply inherited by chance and no selective pressure was present to prevent that as primates tend to get enough vitamin C from their diet. It's also the case that some chimpanzees have very short bacula and some don't have one at all. So bacula aren't very conserved even within a single species either. So perhaps bacula became progressively smaller within the family of great apes and was virtually lost in humans simply by chance. Now, there is some evidence to suggest that the baculum was mentioned in the Bible. The 2001 paper, Congenital Human Baculum Deficiency, the generative bone of Genesis 2, 21-23, notes that the Hebrew word selah, which is usually translated as rib, might be a mistranslation of the euphemism for a baculum, since rib has no intrinsic generative capacity and because there is no technical term for penis in the biblical Hebrew. Therefore, God made Eve from Adam's baculum, and when God resealed Adam's skin, that created the seam over the urethral groove called the raphe. There are, however, cases where penis bones have formed in humans, namely in connections with Peyronie's disease as documented by the 2013 paper, Penile Ossification, a Traumatic Event or Evolutionary Throwback, Case Report and Review of the Literature. Well, that's the baculum for you. It's a penis bone that probably aids in sexual reproduction, although its exact function is unknown. And, before I go, some food for thought. There is a female homologue of the baculum called the os clitoridis, or bobellum, which is even less studied than the baculum because past scientists tended to focus more on the male anatomy more often. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.